Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our program again this week. We're glad for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in CCX's viewing area. Because it is important for good government to know what's going on and when it's an issue that's important to you that you keep in contact with your mayors and city council people. If you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to bring us up to date on what's been happening and what's up and coming in that city so that you can be more tuned in to what's happening. And we hope when you have the time, volunteer to help out in your city because that's important too. And we're very happy tonight to welcome Mayor Mark Stephenson from Maple Grove. We're happy to have you with us again. Thank you. We've had you on many, many times. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here again. Right. Fill, up, fill our audience out there on what's happening in your city. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience. Okay. So I am Mark Stephenson. I've been on the city council since 1997. I was a city council member for about five years before I came, became the mayor in 2001. Was recently reelected here in the fall, so I got another four-year term ahead of me. Um, so I've been on the city council for 21 years and have seen a lot of changes in Maple Whoa, Grove. And, yes. And my family is, I grew up in the northwest suburbs, uh -huh. went to Robbinsdale High School, and my wife went to Park Center. So uh -huh. we've lived here all our lives and have seen a lot of changes in the community and you know, there's a lot more changes coming. Well, I'm sure that helps as you're looking towards the future because you've got all that knowledge from what's happened before. Well, I, I think it does. I mean, you remember sort of the changes. I remember mm -hmm. when you know, County Road 18 opened right, up, right. which is now 169, but right. that was a big deal back then. Oh, yes. But you know, obviously a lot of things have changed out mm -hmm. here in the last 20 to 40 years, and I'm sure that we'll continue to see a lot of changes over the next 20 years. Oh, I'm sure. And then I asked you to think about some of the future issues coming, because we're going to talk about current issues in a little bit, but I thought I'd let you speculate on what are some of the future things that you see coming up maybe in the next five, ten years for Maple Grove? Well, I think that, you know, one of the continuing issues that we always have are transportation issues ah. and sort of how do we continue to expand our transportation as it meets our needs uh -huh. for our community. Uh, we'll have a number of county roads that will need some expansion in the next ten years. Right. And so we're sort of hopeful that the county will see that and bring forward some of those road designs and plans to, you know, really meet the needs of the ah. community. and. Our neighboring communities that will be using our roads. Uh, oh, right. A good example is, you know, the interchange of 610 needs to be completed so we can finish ah. uh, the access out to the west, and we'll need to have some improvements on County Road 101, especially in the northern part oh, of our sure. city, because as you know, the new interchange is built out in Dayton, the Brockton interchange. Uh -huh. Um, County Road 101 will become an incredibly busy oh, two-lane road and right. it really needs to be a four-lane road. Right. So we'll see a lot of changes over the next uh, few years in our transportation system and you know, we're also going to see a lot of commercial and industrial development coming to our city now that 610 is open and oh, right. we have the TIF district in the gravel main area. So you're going to see a lot of you know, new growth in our community mm -hmm. over the next 10 years. Well, we'll talk about some areas ahead of time, and I thought we'd start out because you've added some new athletic fields to Maple Grove, which I'm sure that the teams and the sports are all happy to see. But I thought maybe you could tell us how many have been added and where they're at. Sure. So where we're at right now is we're building four new athletic fields up just north of the Maple Grove High School oh, Stadium. Okay. Um, they are four fields that are designed for football, lacrosse, and soccer. Uh -huh. They will be lit. They are ah. turf fields, so they you know, will be nice that way. They'll be usable all, a bigger portion of the right. year. And then as a part of it, we've also uh, put in what are called these cooling beads hmm. so that the fields will stay cooler. In the oh, summertime, huh. the turf fields have a tendency to get really, really hot. Right. Right. And so they've designed these cooling beads now that will essentially keep the fields very mm -hmm. close to the actual air temperature. So instead of, you know, it's 85 degrees mm -hmm. and the field's 105 right, degrees, right. the field will still be like 85 degrees. So it should be a very nice development. It's going to be a very beautiful development. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I know our 
various athletic associations are very excited to oh, see that sure. for their teams. Well, I never heard of cooling beads for turf. I learned something new. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, you know, especially, you know, in the middle part of the country in the summertime. Right, oh, the yeah, fields, definitely. You know, you know, I remember playing on fields, you know, and, you know, coaching here over the last few years. And, you know, sometimes on a really hot day, it would feel like oh, your feet right, were burning. Right. Yeah, you could the, feel the heat rising. You could feel right. the heat, and you play at some of these facilities, and they, they would actually have ice and water available <laughs> for the kids to right. cool their feet. right. Which, right. you know, tells you that it's too hot. Yeah, definitely. And what are some features of these fields? Sure. So I think that one of the things that's exciting is that, you know, we're bringing in a very modern design for okay. our concession stand. We're, we'll have a beautiful picnic pavilion oh. there as well. And then we'll also have a play area for the kids who aren't playing. Oh, sure. So, and then they're going to have some what are called sails today. Uh -huh. So they're sort of big tarps that go up oh. that provide shade. Ah. So it's really designed in part so that if you're watching, okay. you, you don't have to sit out in the sun or uh -huh. your kids don't have to sit right. out in the sun. Right. And there'll also be a, a, a warm up area that's turfed as well. Mm -hmm. So that if you're one of the teams that's playing, you can warm up ah. on turf as right. well. Right. So and get ready to play because in particular, the fields are designed and, you know, the hope is to bring some tournaments to town. Oh, of course. And so, you know, the tournaments, the teams will be back up one and the other. So mm -hmm. if you have a place to warm up, it works better. Oh, so, of you know, I think that it's exciting the way that it'll be laid out. And there's a, the way we designed the pavilion where the concession stand and picnic uh -huh. are. There's also a space for the new food truck concepts uh, oh, so, right, right. so we'll be able to have several food trucks up there at the same time so if you're having a really big event yeah it will be able to be really well done oh it sounds interesting have yeah. to drive by and take a look when something's yeah. in process yeah it'll be it won't be open until the summer okay it's uh we got a little bit behind because of a unknown xl energy high power line ah. going through our property where it was someplace where it wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. And so that put us about a month behind. Oh, right, and so, right. you know, we won't have the fields done as early as we thought. Right. But they'll be done in the summertime. And that'll add, add, just add to the uh, for amenities that are available in Maple Grove. Yes, it will. Now, we'll move on to new business developments. And there's lots of them that we can yes, talk there about. Are. Right. Um, why don't we start with the uh, Duran project. It's in the gravel mines. It's at Elm Grove Parkway and Hemlock Lane to kind of focus people where it's at. Maybe you can tell us about, there were an apart, some apartments in there and different phases and what's happening. Sure. So the Duran project, which is on the northeast corner there right. of Elm Creek Boulevard and Hemlock Lane. Uh, so on the very north end of the property, he has built a series of a beautiful apartment buildings okay. and they're finishing the final phase. Oh. Uh, it's a wonderful set of apartment buildings that has an 80,000 square foot clubhouse with wow. it. So, you know, it has the uh, indoor swimming pool, mm -hmm. the indoor golf simulator, some dining areas wow. for the tenants to use for bigger events. Right. Um, so it's very well thought out, very well designed. And then south of there is sort of the retail area. Okay. So in that retail area, uh, there are two new hotels that are coming, oh. and they're being built right now. And then there is uh, another bank, a couple of restaurants, uh -huh. some other retail stores that are sort of in this uh, retail area. Right. And then there'll be a smaller office building built oh. there as well. So it'll be like a whole complex. It'll be like a whole right. complex, and you know there'll be a lot of stuff right there that'll help service the apartment buildings. I think there's like 450 of them there, uh -huh. so it's a lot of new new apartments that are being built right there as well. So when that, all the things you just mentioned got completed, will that complete that area? That will complete that north uh, uh, east corner okay. for now. Uh, Schuler Shoes is going to be building their new headquarters oh. right east of there. Uh -huh. So that will be started as well in ah. the near future. So they're going to build a new headquarters along ah. with a new store right there. Uh -huh. So. One more month. development right right and and businesses that people really like right right and yeah. Shores is a great store yeah. they're on main street right now and we look forward to their new building now commercial buildings and i'm not sure if i've got this 
spelled right, which doesn't matter, but alum? Alum. 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 Okay. I wasn't so, sure if I could say it right. Now, that's also in the gravel pit area, right? That's just down the street from the Duran uh -huh. Project. So that is also, also just off of Elm Creek Boulevard, uh, just east of the Costco. There's okay. a new uh, industrial commercial building going up. It's about 300,000 square feet in size. There's actually two of them that are right. pretty much identical in size, but the one you're talking about is for the new business of a loom. And then what do they do? They make a lot of uh, accessory products like candles, potpourri, oh. sort right. of if you're shopping at Yankee Candle right, or right. Anthropology or some of those yeah. type of stores, you'll see a lot of products from a loom in those stores. And so they have six locations in Bloomington, uh -huh. and they're consolidating all their operations uh -huh. in Maple Grove. So their headquarters, their research facility, their production facility, and their warehouse will all be right there. Yeah, you've had that happen with a number of businesses it, that have moved it, out, right? Yeah, it really is, I think, the new model. Yeah. I think for, you know, it used to be that businesses were sort of willing or happy to have different units in mm -hmm. different places. And what we've seen over the last few years is that really, businesses are trying to consolidate mm -hmm. all their operations in one location. And so you're seeing a lot of companies are sort of following this model right. of putting their headquarters together with all their facilities. Right. Now another uh, commercial building in the Hilger transfer site. Now that's sure. on 85th and Hemlock. And where is that okay. Com located so, to something else? So in comparison to where we were just talking about the Duran right. development, this is probably about three quarters of a mile straight north on Hemlock Lane. Oh, okay. It's just south of the U ah, just south okay. of the UPS okay. building. Um, it's on the northeast corner of Hemlock and 85th Avenue. Uh, the old Hilger transfer site. Uh -huh. You know, back when I grew up, we would have called it a dump. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Today we call them a transfer site. Well, and that's part of what you had to do with the property, right? Was right. to do some cleaning up. Right. So it is an environmental site that needs to be cleaned uh -huh. up, and so we've received several million dollars from uh -huh. both the state and the county uh, to clean this site up, um, and that is part of the process here. So we'll be essentially coming in removing a lot of the dirt and debris and shipping that off to a place that specially handles it. And then they'll bring in fill and then they will build this new building. That's again gonna be about 250,000 square feet, I believe, and that they'll actually start on the building here in the spring. So the city is involved in city the cleanup is involved and in get the, the land ready? Yes, actually it's a site that was owned by the city. Okay. It is owned by the city and we have, have sold it so that uh, um, this development can occur okay and so we are sort of a partner in trying to get uh -huh. this cleaned up and get this done so you know it can become a productive property location for us. So do you have any developers with plans for that area? Yes it's okay. been actually sold to a oh, group okay. that has an interest in they've really set out the building and the different bays I don't know if they have any specific users uh -huh. yet but the building is ready to go can be ready to go next year. Another addition, Another addition to, <laughs> to our community. All right, great. Now you've got a high V coming. We do. And where is it going to be located? So the high V is going to be located at Bass Lake Road in 101. Okay. They've already started the development uh -huh. down there. They've done the, the land work and they're doing the foundation work. And so uh, I think that our hope is that they can put the building up over the winter and then be open you know, next uh -huh. year. So we're excited about that because that area of Maple Grove really needs a grocery store, ah. really needs that type of development because there really isn't anything out there that right. way for either those who live in southwestern Maple Grove or Corcoran or Bendina or northwest Plymouth, so it should be great. Right, and, it, and the traffic has gotten worse and worse, so I'm sure they're going to be extremely happy to go to someplace close by. Right, I mean for those, you know, you either have to come to sort of the northern part of Maple right. Grove or you have to come back across the freeway right, right. to get to the grocery store yeah. and this will now make it so you don't have to do that. And uh, I think you said by summer? I, I'm not sure if it'll oh, be actually open. On. It'll be later. open, I think, later in the year. Later, sometime later in next year. In so, sometime later next year it should be open. Okay. Yeah. And you've got uh, several new restaurants coming to Maple Grove. I've got some names and then you can tell me about them. There's Crave, 
Brick and Bourbon, Siesta Cancun, Rosardi's, and Rock Elm Tavern. Maybe you can tell us kind of where each one of these are at and just a little bit about them and when sure. people can so, go try them out. So all of them are actually open now. Okay. So Crave opened about a week ago uh -huh. or two weeks ago now. So that is in downtown Maple Grove right on Main Street. Uh, it is like the other Crave, sort of a middle to upscale uh -huh. restaurant that has very good food right. and uh, you know it's a it's that type of restaurant so that's a great addition it's a locally owned restaurant uh -huh. so that's nice to have as well oh so, definitely you know, i think one of the things we're excited about is pretty much all of these restaurants aren't chains yes there's yes. some they're really a really locally owned restaurant uh, which is exciting right. we've had so many chains for so many years right uh, Brick and Bourbon is open. It's in the old Don Pablo's building. Ah, right. And so it's uh, really sort of has a feature of having a lot of different bourbons, so huh. a lot of different what I'll call high-end whiskeys, right, scotches, right. bourbons for their for their clientele. And then it has really good food. Uh -huh. So and a lot of different items that are right. li very unique. So that's a fun place to go to. Um, Fiesta Cancun is a Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. that's right on Main Street. Uh, again, a locally owned restaurant, ah. and it has really good Mexican food. So ah. I'm we're excited. Try to that out. I like the Mexican. We're, yeah, we're excited to have them in town. Um, Rosardi's is a Chicago deep dish pizza right. restaurant, uh, historically from Chicago. Uh -huh. um, I think that this is the second store that they have uh -huh. is outside the Chicago area. Uh -huh. But there's one in Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and then now one uh -huh. in Maple Grove. Uh -huh. So uh, I just saw the owner the other night, and mm -hmm. they have wonderful, really good deep dish pizza. Uh -huh. If you like deep dish pizza, this try, is that one out try this one out. Um, so that one is actually located up by the hospital. Oh, okay. Up by the hospital, up by the Target right. up there. So right. that's where that's located. And then Rocky Elm Tavern, sort of on the same street as Rosardi's is, up by the hospital. Okay. And it is a locally owned um, restaurant that really f features, I would say, you know, beers and then food and has right. very good food as well. So we're very excited about oh, all these right, various restaurants right. that have been added to our community. And, you know, it brings a nice new variety as oh, well. Yeah. You know, it's nice to, like I said, to get away from what we've had a lot of, which right. is the franchise restaurants. So this is a great development for us. Oh, I know when we travel, especially, we look for the, the little small homeowned. Right, you, you want to you, you see these type of restaurants right. because, right. you know, they have a tie to the community. Yep. Um, they oftentimes get more involved in the right. community. Oh, yeah. They get involved in community events, activities, right. which is also great. Oh, definitely a good, a good feature. Now you've got also, now we're going to switch gears because we'll go to new housing development because that's another segment that's been going on. Uh, what areas of Maple Grove are still available for developing homes okay. or residential? Yeah, I think that there's really three main parts of Maple mm -hmm. Grove that really remain that are available for homes. Uh, we have the gravel area that still has some area for homes. Uh, we have the southwest part of Maple Grove, uh -huh. <coughs> mainly sort of where I expect a lot of the new homes will come will be off of the old Elm Road oh, between sure. Vicksburg and Lawndale. Uh -huh. There's a lot of land down there to be okay. developed, but there's a lot of what I'll call old time five and ten acre parcels that uh -huh. have to really be put together uh -huh. for these developments to right. come together. Right. So that may take a while, but mm -hmm. that that is there. And then the really bigger part of the development area is up in the northwest quadrant, uh -huh. a little bit on the east side of 94, but most of it on the northwest okay. side of 94. And so, you know, we're going to see a lot of development happening mm -hmm. out there in the next five to ten years. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're going to see literally, you know, several thousand homes that we've built out in that northwest quadrant over the next ten years. Right. And one of the areas was like along Vicksburg and Elm Road. Right. So what would kind of housing is proposed there? Well, I, I, I think Or your plan? The plan really is it'll be single family. Okay. Um, my guess is that given the topography of a lot of rolling right. hills, right. that you're probably going to see some bigger homes, maybe a little bit bigger, oh, lo sure. big, a little bit bigger lots just because of the topography. Right. Um, so I think that would probably be 
what I would expect that would be developed out there. And then you have some along Fernbrook and Territorial Roads. What <coughs> is proposed or might come in there? So what we've just approved, uh, sort of just north of County Road 81. Okay. It's uh, Fernbrook crosses there just north sure. of the, the high school. So oh, that's right, the road that goes right. by the high school. So north of the high school, uh, we have approved a series of apartment buildings uh -huh. and townhomes for that uh -huh. area. Um, so uh, th those are already starting to go up, some of them, uh -huh. and some of them will be built here in the spring. So there's a lot, and we have one additional development that's actually be coming before us here in January uh -huh. for the more apartments and more townhomes up there. So uh, a lot of city planning and work goes into what should go into each area, and then you have to find the developers that want to do it. Right, I mean, because we, you know, it's really important for a city to have taken the time to sort of conceive of the ideas of how do you want to lay this out, uh -huh. how do you want to plan it so that it functionally works. And another area that I know you're doing something in is the area of affordable housing. Yes. Maybe so, we could hear so, what Maple Grove is um, doing there. You know, over the years, we've, uh, I think, been very active in this community on affordable housing, and we have another affordable housing project that's going up. It's uh, called the Botno uh, Development. Uh, it's by John Duffy. Okay. It's an, <clears throat> a second phase of a current first phase. So this uh, property is located just west across the street of where the Duran oh, apartment okay. units are in downtown Vapor Grove. So this right. again is right off of Hemlock Lane, only on the west side right. of the road instead of the east side. And so, you know, they, he and his companies do a wonderful job ah. of building these uh, uh, locations and you know certainly if you drove by you wouldn't know or understand that this is affordable housing it looks like the rest of the housing right. and, and that's the key right that's an important part for cities to be able to find developers to do that right it is and you want you want developers who are stable and mm -hmm. who really plan to hold the property for a period of time because then they have a stake in the outcome right. of who's right. living there right because one of the biggest challenges uh, with some of that housing is to make sure that <coughs> you know we don't end up with a criminal element in the housing. Oh, right. We've right. Had, we had that experience once a number of years ago, mm -hmm. and it's very tough to oh. deal with and get a handle on it. But if you have developers and owners that are responsible and deal with it quickly and effectively up right. front, right. Uh, everybody in the building has a much better place to live. Oh, right, and, and the, so the, the people living there are happy too. Well, right? absolutely, because they're right. the ones that are most affected right. by that right. sort of criminal conduct that happens. Right. They're the ones that oftentimes right. the crimes are committed against. And, you know, when it, the owner and the city together work together to seriously address those issues, sure. uh, I think that it really works mm -hmm. and it really helps the community. And well, we referenced your transit system when we talked about the transit commission and i thought we could tell people a little bit more about it because it is different than most of the other nine cities in yes ccx's viewing area maybe you can say what's briefly involved give us the overview of your transit system so our transit system really is focused primarily on trips from maple grove to downtown minneapolis okay. and back really sort of a morning commuter uh -huh. downtown and an evening commute back home. Right. Uh, we also, so we have a number of locations throughout the city. Uh, we have, you know, two main, what I'll call terminals or transit uh -huh. locations, one in downtown Maple Grove and one up by the hospital. Oh. And then we have several other locations throughout the community where we have bus locations sure. and then we also have several areas where we have what I'll call a bus route uh -huh. where these route buses go down like 89th or right. down and have certain stops certain along stops the way, along yeah. the way picking up people um, we also have what I'll call the smaller local rider right. program so you can call arrange for a ride from whether it's your house or your apartment someplace and back um, so that type of <clears throat> very similar to like the Metro Mobility right, Program, only right. this is really sort of for everyone. Um, you can arrange a, a local ride as well. Right, which is which is not available in most of the and cities, the cities in our don't area. Have that. Right. So that 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 makes us different, and you know. Right, it provides a, a good 
um, amenity for your residents. It does. Now, you, uh, your transit system won an award recently. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so we won an award. So the city was recognized for the wonderful transit yeah. program that we have. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting over the years. So we have won several awards. And once again, uh -huh. we were recognized for, you know, really a, a system that's efficient, effective, and runs very well. Um, so that's that's good to see, yeah, and it's nice, nice to get the somebody the, else recognizes well, it. Well, it, right? it is because we've won a very good program, and right. the employees who do that have done an incredibly mm -hmm. good job. And it's glad I was glad to see them get some recognition. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. <coughs> now, your transit system went through a rebranding process and developed some new graphics. Well, and they received an award too. So I thought we'd better mention them. Right. So, you know, we'd had sort of what I'll call the green leaf color on our buses right. for a long, long time. And we were looking at it and thought, you know, we should probably be rebranding. Uh -huh. You know, periodically you should do that too. Right. <clears throat> and so we spent a considerable amount of time, worked with a local company called Prime Advertising, uh -huh. and they came up with this new design for all the various bus vehicles that we have. Right. And it's really a what I'll call more of a reddish maroon look uh -huh. with a maroon maple leaf. Right. And, you know, it, and we rebranded the program to call it My Ride. Oh, right. Yeah, because so, it used to be Dial-A-Ride. Right, Dial-A-Ride, right. so now it's My Ride. So, you know, we've rebranded it in a number sure. of ways to try and make it. And with that, we try to change some other things about how uh -huh. we do things. You can now make arrangements online. Uh -huh. So, you know. Upgrade everything, right? Well, upgrade everything yeah. and make everything more user friendly. Right, right. An important part to keep <coughs> a, keep a service like that going. And then also, they can pay for the rides with a mobile phone. Maybe you right. can talk about that. So I think that you know, a lot of millennials in particular right. have gotten used to paying uh -huh. for a lot of things <laughs> right. on their phone. Right. You know, whether it's stopping at Starbucks in the mm -hmm. morning and showing them your phone and you get, you can pay for mm -hmm. things. We now have the app so that when you get on, you can use your phone to pay and it works very well. Very up to date. Very up to yeah. date, very <laughs> modern. And I will put up on the screen, if there's any questions that people have about the transit system, they can contact the transit administration at 763 Four nine four six zero zero five, or transit at maplegrovemin.gov. Right. Because definitely there might be people out there that aren't quite aware of how convenient this could be for them. Right. It's it's a system that works very well. Right. And, you know, if you have concerns or issues, that's a great great way to get them addressed. Well, I want to thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. your sharing your expertise with our audience out there. And we'll encourage those of you from Maple Grove, if you've got, if any of the areas we talked about are ones that kind of ring a bell with you, be sure to be in contact with Mayor Stephenson or with the, your city employees too, right? That's absolutely right. And we'll ask you to join us again next week for part two on Maple Grove issues. Bye.